Um, you know, I read a thing this week, Julie, that oh. said that hair of the dog that bitch is a big old myth. No, it's not. No, it's fucking not. Um, and these beer moses aren't delicious. It's 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 eleven a.m. on a Sunday. <laughs> The regular crowd shuffles in. There's a Janine sitting next to me who isn't hungover because he made better choices than us. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, God. It's all for you. Bill, I believe this is killing me as I think about all that wine that we drank. (laughs) But I'm sure that I could be a movie star. No, I absolutely couldn't. That's all, that's all I got. You know, for not planning, I Man, think that turned out okay. That was so much effort. <clears throat> I don't. <laughs> I'm just going to... This is... Before we do our introductions, I'd like our listeners to know that, well, you may be listening to this at, I don't know, on your break at work. In your bad tub. A park. You, well, you've, you've probably... Maybe you've cracked one, and you're, and you're rewarding. You're, you're having a tipple. Um, but Julie and I, uh, learned a lesson and it was that if we're going to record at 11 AM on a Sunday, we should not Mm -hmm. watch the episodes the night before and then get drunk enough while watching them to decide that we should really play some board games now. Oh God. (laughs) Um, so we're both pretty hungover. Mm. I actually ate Dunkin' Donuts breakfast this morning unironically. I made a burrito and then stuffed scrambled eggs in it that I cooked in the microwave. You guys, it's not good. No. Janine, however, fresh as a damn daisy. Yeah. I Looking great. He, yeah, he's, he stayed in and read a wonderful book. Ah, what uh, hi, I'm Allison Shoemaker. <laughs> Julie Starbuck. And this is Janine. Hey. And welcome to our coverage of season one of Outlander. If you've been listening, you know that we started with season two and we're saving season one for the drought lander. Oh, I really hate that. <laughs> for the hiatus. <laughs> um, and here we are. Uh, if you are listening for the first time, uh, because one of your friends got you drunk and told you to, as we instructed all six of our fans to do, <laughs> then welcome. Uh, I suggest going back and listening to season two after you've listened to season one. We're going to do one little tiny formatting tweak this season, which is uh, we're going to leave a little space at the end before we talk about anything that relates to what happens in season two. So if you're watching along, we're going to try our best to mostly be spoiler free, but, you know, things happen, but we'll do our best. And at the end, if we're talking about things that happen in the future or we're talking about how it reflects on season two, that stuff's going to go right at the end. You will, that will need to be a constant reminder in my face. I'll go. (laughs) Okay. Exactly (laughs) like that every time. But, you know, it's just after we get through this beer most, I'm probably probably just going to forget. <laughs> uh, we have one other programming note before we jump in, and we'll be talking about this more at the end of the episode. Um, but we have a Patreon account for the first time, and we are very excited about it. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's I really neat. Yeah. Who are these people? I love them. Thank you. We will be reading their names at the end of the episode, as promised, and the reward. But if you have not taken a look yet, and you want to throw us a dollar a month, or three dollars a month, or five dollars a month, or whatever, um, there are some cool rewards. Uh, Patreon is a site that allows people to directly uh, contribute to the work that artists that they like are making, and uh, and then there's also us. <laughs> Nailed it! Just, just some schlubs Nailed and a it. microphone. Um, so you can support all kinds of people. Uh, I first found out about it through Amanda Palmer, uh, who is, uh, used to sing for the Dresden Dolls and is a musician and performance artist and is married to Neil Gaiman. Anyway, um, so there are, there's a bunch of great stuff to support. And now, if you like the show, you can support us. And it's patreon.com slash podlenderdrunkcast. And we'll talk about it more at the end of the episode. One brief note on it. Allison started it this week. And we already have enough Patreons. <laughs> Do we just call them patrons? patrons. They're patrons. The patrons. site is Patreon. I like yeah. Patreon, though. <laughs> or sponsors. <laughs> we already have enough sponsors <laughs> to pay for <laughs> our beer pretty much every month no it's we'll see we have to pay for our our hosting and our yeah because yeah, that yeah. stuff's been coming out of my sweet sweet pockets no. um, which are pretty fucking empty at the moment yeah so. man all right but, then let's take care of but the, right. take care the hardware first you'll and then be the you'll be buying later. us a beer yeah uh the hardware and software and software upgrades it's like it's like adobe you just gotta keep hitting install <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Anyway, so now on with the show. Um, so this is uh, pi- episode one, Sassanac, the pilot that wasn't a pilot because it was ordered to series in advance. So it's hmm. Sassanac. Does that happen a lot? Uh, not often. I mean, it does. It's more with uh, premium networks. Okay. And not always. Some of them still title their first episode pilot, but like the first episode of Game of Thrones is not called pilot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, uh, however, the first episode of Lost is called Pilot. I remember that. And it's like but a see, double whammy. Get it? See? Because it's a plane and yeah. somebody's flying it or not. Yes. This is like the third Lost joke that's been made around me in the past two days. There's more <laughs> it's coming. Oh, oh there is wow. more. Yeah. There is more. I can't wait. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's the zeitgeist, I guess. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, or a 15, 16, 20, 40. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love that you still remember. Oh, I mean, it's burned in my brain. No. Also, it's sore to my job um, to know shit like that. Anyway, we open Sassanac with what I think might be the prettiest shot in the whole series. I wrote down the note, strong Scotland porn. Yeah. Because it's so gorgeous. It's, it's the wedding of shots. That's yeah. how pornographic the Scotland porn is. It really was just rolling hills. It's all lush, it's lush, verdant landscape. It's gorgeous. And then we move right into what we, Julie and I have decided we're calling Claire's Vazalog. <laughs> because she talks about a fucking vase for like three and a half minutes. And I know that that's the British pronunciation of vase. <laughs> but anytime somebody says vase... I don't know if they're my friend anymore. It ma- it makes me think of Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. I'm pretty sure it's not, Julie. I think we're just drunk. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, good morning. Um, <laughs> poor Janine. He's so sober. Um. He's just really sober. <laughs> and he doesn't have a headache. Mm. And he's tripping off like, that sweet, sweet book action. We might talk about that more later, too. <laughs> anyway. Um, so what is the Vazalog actually about? She's talking about the life that she thinks she wants, right? Well, <clears throat> she thinks that... Yeah, I guess it's the life she thinks she wants. I, it's the same feeling that I have when I go to apartment therapy. <laughs> or when I'm standing outside of CB2 at the corner of yes. fucking North and Clyborn. Totally. Or we, last night we also used the example of Banana Republic. Yeah. Where you're like, man, it would be nice to live a life where I could justify owning that ridiculous suit. It would oh, be. Oh, look, they have a Mad Men collection. I can totally justify owning those slacks. It would be so incredible to have that couch. Hmm. Only this is less like material <laughs> comforts env- envy and more the idea I, of being a person who would have a life where owning a vase Mm-mm. was practical. Because she was, she was always on the road with her Uncle Lamb, right. lighting cigarettes and mucking around in the dirt. When and, she's like 10. And going, Mr. Jones! Mr. Jones! <laughs> um, you know? So, and then she was at war, um, and so she's never owned a vase. I'd never owned a vase. Uh, also, Katrina, uh, her accent gets way better as the series goes on. That's but true. But going back and listening to the pilot, I was like, oh, man, I'm not sure that I would have thought, wow, her accent's not on point. And, and n- except for now, when I've heard it be flawless, it's impeccable now. So mm-hmm. going back and listening to the first episode, I was like, oh, she's, she's working a couple on that. of your little A's are not quite there. She's working on that. Yeah. It's also pretty clear that she is nervous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know who's not nervous? Tobias Minimus. 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 Yeah, no. He's he's like, um He's like, whatever, it's Tuesday. Okay, yeah, it's just time to time to go to time to make the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as I hold a fucking Dunkin' Cup in my hand. Literally, you guys, I need you to know I do not enjoy Dunkin' Donuts anything, and I I had no choice this morning. <laughs> I mean I like Dunkin' Coffee. Right. Uh, it's fine. You'd have to say easy sugar though, or you'll have a heart palpitation. They actually made made it right. But I'm still kind of like. Mm. Anyway, so we get the Vossalog. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. It's is really good, but funny. An immediate flashback to is this her in the front lines? Yeah. With some World gnarly War wartime surgery. Yeah. Um, because we were very excited to start season one um, because of the increased sex count, uh, we kept a tally. Uh, yeah. I was about mm-hmm. to say we didn't keep a tally in the second episode, but there isn't any sex in the second, mm-hmm. second episode. Anyway, um, we keep a tally. We'll, more on that later. Um, I'm just so primed for there to actually be sex in this season that when the, <laughs> when the guy who was getting his leg amputated was laying there screaming in pain, it was like, oh, God, oh, God. And I just sort of assumed that it was fucking. It did sound a little bit like but fucking. No. It did not look like fucking. No. As she... <laughs> 
dug into his thigh to try to clamp off his spurting femoral artery. And then there's this great moment where she gets she gets splooshed right in the face. Yeah. And she just wipes it away and keeps Pushed going. Pushed the blood off. And Ugh. she's really, like, in charge. And then mansplainer yeah. McGee shows up and tells her to get out of the way, nurse, so he yeah. can take care of it. Your what care is that not? And she's like, ugh. And then she... <laughs> She starts walking away, and there's a full body shot of her, and she is, I said, she looks like Sweeney Todd. <laughs> she's wearing this white apron, and she's covered in blood. She's kind of in shock-ish. And then another nurse walks up to her, or another soldier, but it's a woman, so I assume it was a nurse at the time, mm-hmm. um, to tell her that... The, Claire, it's over! The war it's is over. over! And then hands her, straight up hands her, Claire... A bottle of champagne. An open bottle of champagne. And Claire does what any person, what I would do, and just bottoms up. Yeah. She, she kind of stares around. She's like, really? Everybody's really God, happy. I'm tired. And she's she just exhausted. takes this big, long swig. Covered in blood. Just right out of the champagne bottle. And the war is over. Tipping it right up. <laughs> tipping it right up. And then we flash to her and Frank in the beautiful car. In the Highlands. Yeah. So now we're, we're, now we're on the road. Yeah. It is a beautiful car. Although, based on what we know about Scotland um, from later viewings of the series um, or episodes, God, I'm so tired. Um, mm-hmm. I'm like, Claire, somebody hand me a bottle of champagne and I will tilt that shit to the ceiling. <laughs> um, uh, it seems like an impractical choice. I, it, it's, there's, no, there's no top on that shit. Well, the car seems too fancy. <laughs> yeah, like that kind, like too Iggy Azalea for my liking, because which is a very low tolerance. <laughs> um, he uh, so he's a professor, right? Well, he worked in the in intelligence in the war. Oh, intelligence, NM. <laughs> he's well, got secret money. Yeah, you taught me. I had a professor back then when they cared about education. I guess. Man, well, he's he's going to he's going to teach at Oxford, so he's like top notch. Yeah. yeah, but the car, Aaron, is Ooh, like Lex Luthor's car. Yeah, it's beautiful. This is something I should be googling. It's incredibly it's beautiful. beautiful. And, and they so they drive that shit right into downtown Inverness mm-hmm. and park it on the side of the road and just leave it there and just walk away and from then, it. And I'm like, oh no, and just then sleep they in the car. That across the the tops of the doors of all the houses on the street is something that looks like blood. And Frank's like, are you sure it's blood? Claire's like, bitch, I know what blood looks like. And that's paint. And that's that's even, not blood. It's paint. Oh, nice shout out to my to um, our friends and not blood paint, an excellent band in Brooklyn, New York. Check them out. They have nothing to do with Outlander, but they're a good band. Anyway, um, she's like, yeah, I know what blood looks like. Not only was I constantly covered in it for the last several years, but I've been getting my period since I was like 12. What's your problem? <laughs> yes, I know what blood looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, as it turns out, it is Sawin. Mm-hmm. So there are rituals happening. Sawin is like Halloween. Yeah, but, but Celtic style. Yeah. And Sawin is also the name of my <laughs> barbarian half work Dungeons and Dragons character. It's true. Sawin cuts nipples off things after she kills them and wears them on a necklace. Yeah, she's neck. got a trophy She necklace. is also learning to read. She is learning to read. Sawin, no like other, be smarter. <laughs> anyway, Patty. <laughs> Thank you for the anyway, Patty. I can't believe I, I got you there, man. Anyway, Patty. Uh, anyway, Patty. Um, so they go in. They talk to one of several um, slightly plump, mild-mannered, welcoming Scottish Women's. caretakers that we will encounter in the next two episodes. Mm-hmm. She's running a little B and B, and she's talked about talking about. Oh, it's a bunny time for you to be here. Julie assures me that I can still use a French accent Whenever anytime want. I want. Um, we'll save them. <laughs> but uh, she welcomes them. They have a nice little chat. Frank shows off his history knowledge of the important Which thing that we learn is a that lot. this time of year ghosts are allowed to wander the streets of Inverness. That's very important. It is. And you wouldn't think so, because you think you're just watching a nice show about a lady and a, her husband and a nice car. Yeah. It's like the and love just, bug, Scottish yeah. years. <laughs> yes. They're just traveling the highlands trying to reconnect. But no, that ghost thing matters. So then they go up to their room, and there's a real squeaky bed. And they make fun of it by jumping on it and being hilarious. And Mrs. Baird is downstairs going, oh, those kids. Oh, that's it. What, what on earth are they doing? But she clearly doesn't think it's boning. She's like, what the fuck? What? What's going on what, up there? Aren't you adults? 
she goes back to her paperwork or her knitting or whatever the fuck she's doing. Uh, Making tea. And then they start talking about one thing or another. And then at exactly 12 minutes and 21 seconds into the episode, we get our first fuck. They're doing it. They're doing it. <laughs> On the squeaky bed. Yeah. And then Mrs. Baird knows what's up. Yeah. And she gives a little smile. She looks up at the I'll ceiling I'll say this like, for the Scots. Yeah. They're not prudish. No, nah, man. They're not prudish. So uh, we also, Claire mentions real briefly something about them trying to start a family, and uh, Frank gets a little weird look on his face. We don't really know what that's about, but uh, but we get the sense that they're trying to start a family and that they've got good sex because she seems real into it. Yeah. And also, he's a fine-looking man. He is a fox, dude. He is a stone-cold <laughs> fox. He is a fox. You know, I feel a little bit bad for Tobias mm-hmm, because... Of the character we'll meet later. Actually, several of them. I feel like he gets a little pushed to the wayside, but that is a good looking gentleman. Mm-hmm. He knows how to wear a fucking hat. And he knows how to work a jaw. Yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's meant in all of its various Yeah, and well, when we get to minute 18, yeah. 23. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Tally One for those counting along at home. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, oh, and then we have the flashback to um- Uncle Lamb, which I told Allison. So she talks about, Claire talks about how she grew up with her uncle who was an archaeologist and we had this flashback to her being like 10 or 12 years old running through what looks like Egypt, (laughs) running into an archaeological dig where her uncle is busy brushing the sand off of something and she lights a cigarette for him and they're hanging out and he's showing her this and and I'm like, I want to see that show. I want to see the show where Claire is a little girl traveling the world with her uncle lamb and lighting his cigarettes from Somebody the age of five light it. we yeah. will podcast it i will talk <laughs> about it forever but yeah so we had that flashback and then uh i get what was the what was she talking about she was talking about not being raised by her uncle right or being yeah, on the road she's not she it's does all kinds of lady like part two. Oh yeah yeah because she's talking about how she never had a place yes right She's always, she's been doing all manner of unladylike things her whole life. Um, <laughs> one of which uh, involves uh, forgetting her undergarments. <laughs> so they, so she and Frank get in their gorgeous car and they're driving the, the Scottish countryside. There's a lot of lens flare. It's like real J.J. Abrams up in that bitch. It is, and it's like the colors are hypersaturated. Yeah, but it's beautiful, but it's like, there's a lot of lens flare. Um, and uh, Frank is constantly staring at his beautiful wife, which you can blame him, but he's also not watching Eyes on the, the road, fucking Frank. road. Come on, come on. Come Eyes on. on the road, Frank. Let's, let's focus on our driving, Frank. But also, we have met Reverend Wakefield by this point. Mm-hmm. And not yet? Not yet. Oh, no, because they're at the B&B. That's right. Yeah, so they go to this castle, this ruin. First, they drive by a mountain with a spiky dealy on top that apparently looks like a cook's tail mm-hmm. as we find out later um, and Frank does a whole uh, histrologue hist- mm, no he talks about history and uh, <laughs> and explains that British troops used to wait there to ambush uh, traveling Highlanders um, and it takes a long time for him to just kind of get to the point where like hmm I wonder if that comes back later. Right. And if you uh, are listening and have already listened to season two, uh, I I want those of you who've listened to our Dude Lander episodes, don't worry, we will also be doing Dude Lander for this season as well. Um, But those who listened to the Dude Lander episodes, that moment is when Kevin got pushed right over the edge. He was like, "Uh, oh, gee, I wonder if that is going to come in handy. I wonder if she's going to need to fucking know about that giant rock. I bet she is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But, you know, exposition, it's useful. So they drive and they show up at a ramp. Random Castle. Mm-hmm. He knows that it's Castle Leoc, though, doesn't he? Doesn't he say yes. it? Yeah. Because they're researching his ancestor. Mm-hmm. And he hasn't found out the nickname yet, though, mm-hmm. right? And so he's like, I, I'm pretty sure that my ancestor, who we will later find out is, you know who, <laughs> um, <laughs> was must not be named. <laughs> garrison commander of this area, and this castle fell under his like purview or whatever. So he may or may not have wandered the halls. Yeah, he may or may not have walked where I am walking right now. Shut up, Frank. So they walk around, <laughs> they're looking at the shitty castle stuff. So the ivy everywhere it's amazing is to me. I'll say this. It's crazy. Like if there was a building like that in the United States, there is absolutely no way that it wouldn't have been like dressed up and made like restored and turned into a tourist trap but in scotland, but in scotland, scotland it's just like, oh, are like oh look another castle another shitty old castle look over there there's another one and there's another one and oh, there's, there's another an, one and i, I think just passed one on the us, way yeah. here 
Look, I live in one. It's, it's where the kids go to get high. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to like a tourist It's where the kids go to smoke their dope. <laughs> <laughs> to take their pot. <laughs> that was a little Irish. But <laughs> Oh, Allison's having a swallowing problem. <laughs> Everybody, wait. You're timing. Those I don't jokes. want her to choke. You're timing those jokes perfectly. So, like, we could have a, a spit take at some point. It's <laughs> almost like Allison was taking the pot. <laughs> so hold on, I'm going to talk about something really boring for a second while she gets this down her throat. All right, <laughs> that didn't that didn't help. So the castle is a piece of shit. Oh, nailed it! <laughs> Well, I'll remember that. <laughs> All I'll never need to do it is just be like, they're taking the pot. <laughs> Thank you, Rosie O'Donnell. Can we take, can we take a station break? <laughs> we'll be right back. Everything's fine. <laughs> I've been covered. We went to a shitty castle, and you know. <laughs> so they're walking it around. It was almost like we were smoking the pot. <laughs> Taking the pot. Taking the pot. <laughs> anyway, so they go to this castle. They wander into a room that Frank thinks is maybe the kitchen, and, and then they find this door that won't open. Frank can't open it by himself. His wife has to help him. Uh, it's almost like Claire is really good at adding weight to a, a he- an important object that needs to move from one spot to another when her husband needs that help. Yeah. Including, we'll that including, but not limited to, wangs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I was thinking. I was thinking of weapons. But, oh, oh yeah. No, I, okay. I knew that. I was trying to avoid a spoiler, but okay. everybody knows she can move a wang. She can really move a wang. Mm-hmm. Um, so they bust open this door, and as they walk in, uh, Katrina shows shows us that Claire maybe has like little feet walking over her grave or something she has like a weird moment like a we were trying to come up with an appropriate term for when you have deja vu for something that hasn't happened yet except for that it happened in the past yeah do, is there a way to have to remember something that hasn't happened yet is there a word for that and is it german listeners we, please tell us yes the closest we came up with was deja vu. maybe it's like because it's like a ghost maybe like Deja vu. Deja, deja vu. vu. <laughs> uh, that's all right. If you come up with something better, listeners, please let yeah, us know. Yeah. That's good. I like deja vu. Anyway, she has this moment uh, when they walk into what she says is probably the the home of the castle troll. Um, um, hilarious. I did not even think about that. <laughs> yeah. We later learned that it's actually the hospital, and we'll learn that um, and for the an actual road. troll lives there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, God. No, it's Claire. it's Claire. Yeah, but it's King Ricketts. Anyway. <laughs> He's kind of trolly. <laughs> we'll get there. That's, that's episode two. Anyway. Oh, yeah. um, but Claire's, like, walking around, <laughs> looking at all the dirt and the gross, and Frank is and wandering, IV. right? And there's something about um, the uncleanliness that just makes her want to get her pussy licked. <laughs> so she just sits on a table. She sits on a table. She makes this, like, little come-hither face. And then pulls her skirt up, and she's got the old-school, like, guard and shit he says you'll get dirty and she goes you'll have to give me a bath with your tongue yeah <laughs> and then he does yeah so he walks over and tries uh, to kiss her 1823 yeah. by the way he walks over and tries to kiss her and she literally puts her hand on the top of his head and pushes him down like a bro <laughs> And then he puts his hand up there, and he's like, well, Mrs. Fraser. No, not Mrs. Fraser yet. Oh. Mrs. Randall. You've forgotten your undergarments. It seems you've forgotten your undergarments. And she just pushes him right down. Yeah. And he goes to work. It's, I'm not going to lie. That scene is pretty hot. Yeah. And it's like, when you're watching shows that have sex in it, you never see this. No. You never. Like, straight up, her legs are over his shoulders. Yeah. There's all of it. And he has just gone to town. And it's like, ah. Oh. Yeah, he's got his head up in her skirt, and she is really feeling her Enjoying oats. it. Yeah, she's feeling it. Um, so then we cut to Reverend Wakefield's, because nothing says, <laughs> let's go visit a reverend and his awesome housekeeper, like getting your pussy licked yeah. <laughs> in a, an abandoned castle surrounded by kids' weeds. Kids taking their pet. <laughs> <laughs> so we meet Reverend Wakefield, who's a cool dude. He's helping Frank research his genealogy. 
we learn that his ancestor uh, was Jonathan Wolverton Randall, who has the nickname Black, Black Jack. Jack. Hmm, wonder and what kind of guy he was. He thinks it's a dashing nickname, and we think, oh, shit. We were like, ugh, gross. Um, and Claire eventually, is, she's just listening and whatever. She seems kind of bored. And Mrs. Graham, it's who's one of it. my favorite smaller characters on the show, comes in. She's like, why doesn't Claire join me in the kitchen? And you think, like, sexist, gender separation over oolong. But then they get to go and sit and have a cup of tea. She doesn't have to listen to history jibber-jabber anymore. Oh, thank God. And then Mrs. Graham reads her tea leaves. Mm-hmm. And this actress does such a good job. What's her name? Tracy Wilkinson. Tracy Wilkinson. Yeah, we love Janine you. Janine on the update. Um, Tracy Wilkinson does such a, such a great, great job in the scene. You can see she's like, um, there's something not right about this cup. And you don't really know what it is, but, like, there's something not right. And you get the sense that it isn't silly for her. Like, she's not trying to say anything that's going to freak Claire out. And then um, she she's not trying to, to bamboozle see, money out of her. Yeah, she has to see Claire's palm. And then it's all about, oh, you have two lines. You yeah. have two love but lines. But first she says, no, the large thumb. And it, if I were Claire at that point, it'd be like, what large thumb, bitch? Are you talking about, you like talking about my hands? man hands? <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> Uh, but the large thumb means uh, that she's good in the sack. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, strong-minded. The mound of Venus means she's good in the sack. Right, and your husband's ne- not... Nay n- like to stray straight. from your bed. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, uh, and then she looks at the lifeline, which has a gap in it, mm-hmm. right? And the marriage line, which is forked, which means mm-hmm. two marriages. And usually a marriage line is split, but in this case, it's forked. And she's very disconcerted. And then Claire gets very disconcerted. And then the dude's... Dude's Cramp walking right on up. in. Okay, the reverend Lady immediately time is over. starts breaking some china and shit because men. <laughs> I mean, oh, gosh. God. Um, and Claire's like, uh, I think I'm going to go. So she mm-hmm. bounces on home and says, oh, Frank, get back before the storm. And then starts brushing her hair. And we get, for book readers, a big moment while she's brushing her hair where it's, it's real tangly and she's having a hard time. She says, Jesus, Jesus Roosevelt, Roosevelt Christ. Uh, which is her famous saying from the old from the old books. Um, and as she's brushing her hair, Frank's walking up and he sees outside, a, outside, mm-hmm. a mysterious figure standing in the street, looking up at Claire's window. It's actually a really cool shot because you can see Claire in the this mirror, mysterious figure, and then above Claire in the mirror in a window. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. And Frank walks up and is obviously suspicious and wants to know why some dude is staring at his wife. Mm-hmm. Um, and said, "Dude." Poof. Turns around and just vanishes. Yeah. And Frank gets freaked the fuck out. I would, too. Yeah. I mean, he was literally standing right next to this thing, and then this thing turns past him and poof. And like Kevin you know Spacey what? at the end of Usual Suspect. Spoiler. Not a spoiler. Who gives a shit anymore? Uh, I've had this uh, a joke stuck in my head for, let's see, I think I was playing that game when I was like 12, so 20 years. I've had a joke stuck in my head, and it's from a sketch that was on an audio CD that accompanied uh, the game You Don't Know Jack. Mm-hmm. Do you ever play that game? And there, was, there were just like sketches on this audio CD, and one of them was for an ad for something called Movie Ending Phone, where you could call and dial in and press a button to have the ending of the movie spoiled for you so you didn't mm-hmm. have to see it. And there's one where you hear the, the noise of a button being pressed, and the voice goes, Kevin Spacey is Kaiser Soze. And then there's another button being pressed, and he goes, and he's the killer in seven! <laughs> <laughs> it makes me laugh every time I think about it. Every time I think about either of those movies, I think of that joke. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, just like Kaiser Soze. He's gone. Um, and you know what? I would be disappointed if that hot ghost disappeared before I got to ask him what the fuck he was doing staring up at a window. Mm-hmm. As you can tell, that ghost is fucking hot. And Frank is, A, scared because he just witnessed this, and B, maybe a little bit intimidated because that ghost was so hot. Also, we get the sense, jealous isn't the right word. Um, wary. Like, he wants mm-hmm. to have the talk with Claire about whether or not... Uh, they fucked other people while they were in the war. Mm-hmm. And uh, Claire is pretty offended. You know, yeah, he kind of, he like tries to dance around it a little bit. He's like, did you have to, you know, comfort? Yeah. And it's well, like, well, shut up. Did you have any Highland soldiers who might be looking to reconnect through the vagina? <laughs> through your pussy hole. <laughs> no, shut up, Frank. Don't be a dick. Why are you being a dick? But then they have makeup sex, and yes. it is... I, did I write down the time for this 28, one? 28, 29. Ooh. And I wrote down naked butts and some boobs. Yeah, and it's hot. That mm-hmm. is a hot, hot sex scene. They're grabbing the... the um, 
Oh, the wire headboard. headboard. And the, the metal headboard. And a thousand women went to Wayfair.com and ordered <laughs> headboards that day. Um, it's uh, it's a pretty hot scene. It's mm-hmm. pretty, pretty hot. And she has this whole monologue about how she and Frank always reconnect through sex. Like, that's where they meet each other. And, and she has no idea. She doesn't even know what's about to fucking happen to her, man. She yeah. doesn't. Uh. Anyway, so Frank, dude, you're pretty good in this act. Um that's pretty what, pretty good. Pretty good. That's but, what we think. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, so after they've uh, done it and they're covered in sweat and cum, <laughs> uh, they, Frank's like, oh, I have to set an alarm. Claire's like, no, you don't. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, seriously, I want to go see the witches. And Tobias Milner has this great moment where he sort of um, chuckles while he's saying it, like he's embarrassed to be he's actually like, saying oh, this out loud. I can't believe this. Let me get my crystal. Yeah, it's uh, it's just very funny and charming. And so Claire decides she's going to go with him. And they uh, wake up really early to go stand at this random circle of standing stones called hmm. Craig, Craig Nadine. Nadine. Uh, it's weird. They look a little bit like... Um, I don't know. They're like fully erect. Yeah. And they're kind of like rock jutting hard. up their rock hard. <laughs> Um, some of them have a little band across the Kind top. of a little bit tumescent, if you will. Y- yes. Uh, throbbing. They look D- like they're throbbing. Yes. Actually, you can feel the heat coming off of them. Yes. And there's a big vein. Yeah. Anyway, they look like dicks is what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, they actually don't, but we call them dick rocks, and it's just... The one in the new middle... Listeners, the dick rocks. The one in the middle, though, the one... It does kind of look like a dick, And it curves slightly to the right. Yeah, and (laughs) it's right in the middle of the big circle, if you know what I'm saying, and I think you do. I think you do. It looks like a dick. Uh, Anyway, so they're spying on this rock formation because they want to see the druids come and perform this ritual, this, like, feast fire day ritual, Samhain ritual. Um, And so the ladies show up, and Mrs. Graham is their leader. (laughs) Uh, And about halfway through... I was like, <laughs> what, are, what are these, the dick rock dancers? And then we immediately were like, oh my God, I just want a musical number. Mrs. Graham and the dick rock dancers. And then they come out, Devin, I'm in heaven. Devin. There's a dick rock and it's really fucking big. And they're like twirling with their lamps and shit. It's the stuff we see in the credits. By the way, I miss the potatoes. More on that later. <laughs> um, but... <coughs> It's really, I, we, we joke about this sequence a lot, and it's the thing that makes the credits look so earnest and precious and, like, mm-hmm. ooky spooky, but it's really beautiful. And all those shots of Mrs. Graham, like, staring at the sun as the sun rises. So the sun rises over Craig Nadoon, and kind of spoilery about season two, it's way better this time. Yeah. It looks good. It doesn't look like a precious pile of dookie. <laughs> <laughs> so the sun rises, Frank and... Claire, watch Mrs. Graham and her dick rock dancers look to the east as the sun rises over Craig Nadoon, and it's a cool moment. And then all the druids leave. They clock out. Yeah. They're, they're it's done. time for their cigarette break. Yeah. They got to go get their Diet Coke and their smoke. And they uh, leave, and then Frank and Claire start to come out, and then one of them comes back, and there's like, I don't know if it's like an offering or she if she forgot something. something. It's totally her iPhone. Yeah. And then she sits on a rock and hangs out, and they're like, oh, we should go. And they leave. And this is important because Claire was about to go pick this little violet flower that she saw. The forget-me-not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which was at the base. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Which was at the base of King Dick Rock. Like... (laughs) I'm sorry for that huge pop sound you just heard. I laughed so hard that it broke the mic, basically. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's at the it's at the base of King Dick Rock, like a beautiful pubic hair. It's right there. It's like right at just the root yep. of King Dick Rock. But she couldn't go because this the druid ruined everything and came so back. They so go, they, they leave. They go back. They have a nice chat. They probably do it again, but we don't see it this time. And then Claire's like, you know, I think I might go back and pick that flower. Do you want to go with me? And Frank says, no, I've got a meeting with the reverend. Mm-hmm. And he comes over and kisses her. And as she walks away, it goes into slow motion. It's the slow motion of doom. Yeah, this is the last time he's going to kiss you for a while, bitch. Yep. And she's like, oh, that was well, weird how the whole yeah. universe slowed down for a second. But I think I'll just go back to that mysterious circle. And, <laughs> and she's picking the, she picks the little flower, and all of a sudden there's this terrifying noise. It's kind of like if a didgeridoo had a microphone attached to it and somebody, Charlie Brown's teacher, was talking through it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. So, for some reason, this noise makes her think, 
God, you know, I should really put my hands on that thing. I just gotta touch it. I just have to see. So she does, and then it goes to a, a, a sequence that I think is pretty iconic in the series, actually, mm-hmm. um, which comes straight from the book. Uh, oh, if you're listening for the first time, Julie has not read any of the books, and I read pretty much all of them. Yeah. Um, and that's it's part of our shtick. <laughs> um, and I never will read oh, them. Oh, and speaking of that, Janine, yeah. so called because of Ghostbusters. Um, <laughs> Janine has not only not read any of them, he has only experienced Outlander by listening to us talk about it, with the exception of the season two finale. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you find folks voted on Twitter, and uh, he will be watching The Wedding with us this season. (laughs) So, anyway. um, (laughs) So, the. Actually, (laughs) shuddered. It's going to be like watching porn with your mom. It will be kind of like watching porn with your mom. So, um, I mean, I've never watched porn with my mom, but I imagine. Anyway, mm. uh, so they, uh, uh she the, touches the she thing, touches she the blacks thing, out. Uh, and right from the book, there's that she describes going through the stones as the, the closest sensation was a time she was in a car. She fell asleep in a car. The car went off a bridge and she woke up as the car was going off of a bridge. And they actually have this incredible shot of her in a car, some other people driving, and it's like this slow motion car wreck it's where awesome. the car is turning over and everything's like spinning in the car. And I think it was a really good way to do it. And after the show, is his name Ronald Moore? Yeah. Ronald Moore was like, I didn't want to do the thing where she disappears and reappears, and I didn't want to do the, like, she walks into the rock thing, because we've all seen this. light. We've all seen this before, and so I took that scene from the book and instead used that as the transition. We thought that was pretty cool. It's great. It's Mm -hmm. a really, really great sequence. Anyway, she wakes up laying on her shawl. And it's like, what the fuck was that? Oh my God, I feel like I want to die. Time to run back to my car. And then Neil, was, Neil said, where's my car? And Julie and I screamed at the top of our lungs, dude, dude where's my, my car? <laughs> and it made us so happy. Anyway, <laughs> she leaves her shawl because I don't know why. Because Frank's was, got money to burn. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then she's running through the woods trying to figure out why all the trees are so much smaller now and why there's no road. And um, where is Inverness? <laughs> and all of a sudden, she sees some soldiers running through the trees. And the, the first group, they sort of blend in. Mm-hmm. The second group, not so much. And it must be because of those, those coats. coats. <laughs> uh, they're wearing red coats. And one of them sees her and straight up just fires a gun right at her face. <laughs> and Claire's like... You know, you try to talk yourself into thinking that maybe you're just on a movie set, but why would actors be using live ammunition? Mm -hmm. And then the bagpipes kick in, and she just takes off running. Somewhere along the line, she loses her belt. Oh, and we need to talk about that costume. Yeah. So, all I'm obviously Tara Dress Buck genius. All the costumes are great. But the costume that Claire is wearing specifically when she goes back to the Stones is this beautiful white dress that would probably cost like $600 at Mod Cloth. Mm Mm-hmm. Like cream colored, light, pretty brown belt around it. Uh, And it just so happens that if you take that belt off, it looks exactly like she's just wearing a nightgown in the Mm -hmm. 18th century. Mm -hmm. Um, So she's running through the woods in her shift. In her shift. Uh, And she runs straight into this dude that looks a lot like her husband. Um, But because he smells like a hell mouth. (laughs) Uh, And he's got drag queen eyebrows. She's like, you're not Frank. And as it turns out, it's fucking Blackjack Randall. Mm -hmm. And he is not charming. No. It is not a dashing nickname. No. It's because he's a son of a bitch. And then he tries to, you know, rape her. Yeah. The the speech of a lady in the language of a whore. I I choose choose the the whore. whore. And he turns her around. She spits in his face. Claire, here's the first instance where I think we see that Claire is a terrible time traveler. Because when confronted by a dude holding a knife to your throat, I could think of lots of options. Maybe try really hard to name in the balls. That would incapacitate him for a bit. Um, Maybe be like, just calm and explain your situation. Because she doesn't know he's a fucking sadist. Mm -hmm. Like, valid options. Spitting in his face seems like a really bad idea. You're just like, there's not an upside. The oh, well, madam, now that you spit in my face, I'm definitely gonna let you go. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, she spits in his face, and uh, he's getting ready to rape her when she gets rescued by <clears throat> Pamplemousse. Pamplemousse. Yes, it's the, first, it's the first sighting of Murtaugh. And you know dun, what? Dun, he looks he looks 
really different. Yeah, his, his hair is hair's way much shorter. shorter. Really? He still looks good, though. He still looks real good. But yeah, he comes, he punches, does he punch Blackjack or something? something. He gets him out of the way. He him. Grabs Claire, spears Claire away to go with his roving band of merry men. He pulls her behind a tree, and there are obviously still redcoats around, and she's screaming and making a fuss, so he just fucking knocks her out with the hilt of his sword. And I said, sometimes you just have to knock a bitch out. And Neil goes... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. And then Jen, who was watching with us, goes, well, if you use bitch in the non-gender specific way, and Neil said, sometimes you just got to knock a motherfucker out. And we're like, yeah. Yes, yeah. Like if you're screaming and you need to shut up because there's red coats everywhere. Yes, knock me out. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Myrta knocks her out with the hilt of his sword, and, and uh, she wakes up in a real gross cabin. Yeah, with, with a lot of gross. Fine looking men in it. It's just hairy, sweaty. And one of them is a grandpa that I'd like to fuck. fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and who may or may not have invented golf. Yeah. We're not sure. <laughs> so, uh, so good old Graham McTavish. Um, just McTavish and all over the he's place. Just, he's just smoking hot. Yeah, how does anybody get born looking like that? Anyway, he's very attractive. He's obviously the leader of this little band of Highlanders. He's trying to ask her some questions. He's mighty suspicious. Mm-hmm. And he decides she's coming back to Castle Leach with them. And Claire's like, huh? But the first, shitty castle where I took the pot. But first, one of the... <laughs> 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 yes. Damn it. Fuck you, Julie. Um, but uh, they're they're standing in the cabin, getting ready to go or whatever. They have to attend to a little medical matter. One of the random dudes, probably just a nobody, and it seems to have been wounded. It's hilarious how they have this shot set up because he's sitting by the fire when they first come into the cabin, and you don't. It's like very clear that they don't want you to look at this person yet, but it's. Impossible because this person has enormous shoulders. Is incredibly attractive, even just from the back. Yeah, you can just tell. It's it's like a pharaoh. It's like visual pharaoh. It is. It's right there. So there the, he is. the crowd parts, and Claire sees that there's the random Highlander whose shoulder has been dislocated. Yeah, like literally hanging like, out of the oh, socket. Oh, I should really keep my mouth shut. Oh, I should really keep my mouth shut. Oh, I should really get away from him at this. And runs over and basically saves him getting a broken arm. And as soon as she walks over, we get to see that face. And Jesus Christ, that is a really good looking man. Uh, no, but- <laughs> this is why it's hard for Tobias Muma. In any other show, he'd be the Stone Cold Fox. But Sam Huon, God he's like damn Superman. it. He's just, he's, he's extremely good looking, mm-hmm. even when his shoulder is hanging out of the socket. And charming, too, even oh, though yeah. he's in inc- intense pain. You can tell there's a little spark, and Claire is obviously traumatized, but she'd have to be blind to yeah. that. Even, and even then, the pheromones. I mean, even then, you could smell it. I yeah. swear to God, it just come off him in waves. Yeah. Just like, well, what? Well, this is a very handsome man. Yeah. I could just tell. Yeah. And wait, how tall are you? Yeah. <laughs> wait, you're still up there? <laughs> oh, you're a tall drink of water. It's like fucking Gene Hackman and Young Frankenstein when Peter Bo- the blind guy when Peter Boyle walks out. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Ooh. she fixes Jamie's arm. Uh, the makeup there is amazing. Mm-hmm. It really looks like, affect whatever it is. You can see the bones of his shoulder, and then you get to watch it go back in. Um, and she all straps him up. And then Gilf and his infinite wisdom... Duncan, in, the, in his infinite wisdom. Duncan? Duncan. Dougal. 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 <gasps> Duncan. Janine. Thanks. Nice. I'm on it. <laughs> Duncan is Macbeth. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, similar. <laughs> uh, so uh, Dougal is like, oh, well, we're taking her with us. I've got a great solution. Why don't we put this scrappy, mysterious woman on the horse with the dude who can only use one arm? But, hey, it works for me. And yeah. it works for Claire, too. Yeah. And he wraps him up in his plaid. And they start running. For those of us who don't speak Highlander, that's plaid. <laughs> and it's basically like a big-ass man shawl. Mm-hmm. So they're riding all night on horses in the downpour covered in wool. Yep. In a tiny little cuddle bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it smells real gross and real good in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Equal parts gross and good. Um... Sun comes up, and they're riding along, and Claire sees a familiar rock formation. Oh, yes. What does it look like? It looks like a cock's tail. 
Oh, what do we remember? Do we actually have a flashback of Frank telling us what that thing was? Oh, well, that's really handy because it was only 20 minutes ago, and, and I I'm pretty sure I would have forgotten it. I had completely forgotten that Frank explained at length that the Redcoats would ambush from this very cock rock. Which, which is good because they need a place to hide because of those coats. <laughs> uh, so, of course... And Dougal's like, you're going to eventually tell me how the fuck you knew there were going to be British officers up there. And she's like, dude, I just traveled in time. What do you want from me? From 1948. Jesus Christ. So as it turns out, yes, they're up there. And Jamie just kind of shoves her, just shoves her right off the horse so that he, and rips his arm out of the sling and goes, and off they go to kick some British ass. By the way, Gaelic is, uh, sounds a lot like Klingon, but it's way sexier. Yeah. I did note that. Sexy, mm-hmm. sexy. Queen. So they're screaming in a lot of uh, Gaelic. Yes. And they beat the shit out of the ambush. Yeah. So they kick all kinds of ass, and uh, Claire takes off running, mm-hmm. um, which she probably should have done to begin with. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have left those dick rocks. <laughs> so she just runs away, and uh, Jamie catches up to her, and there's this like very threatening standoff that's also just smoking hot. Mm-hmm. You just want to go, kiss, kiss! <laughs> Just do it. He's got his sword out and he's covered in blood. And here, so we, we at the drunk cast have a list of things that Jamie is not good at because it's easier than listing things that Jamie is good at. So how can I make this into a double negative? Jamie is not good at looking less hot when he's covered in blood Mm -hmm. because Jamie actually looks more more hot hot (laughs) when he's covered in blood. And I don't understand how that's possible but I bet he smells like pennies. <laughs> it just, like, it just makes me want to eat a steak. I don't even like steak. He's just covered in blood, and he goes, I'll throw you over my shoulder. And it's just really hot. <laughs> like, I'm driven to distraction a little bit here. It's really hot. Anyway, he makes her come back with him, and they get back on the horse, and he says he's not hurt, but whoops, when it's night, he just falls right off that horse. He he gets it's like shot he falls asleep or and goes into shock. giant deltoid. It's same it's shoulder, deltoid, too. deltoid, right? It's, I think the deltoid is in the back. I'm like, Neil, you can correct <laughs> us later. But he got shot in the same shoulder. It's a bad week for Jamie's right shoulder. Yeah. So he hid this wound, and she's real pissed, and she starts swearing at him and asking for iodine. And or methylate, 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 and then she goes alcohol. alcohol. And it's this really great bit because all the Highlanders are like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, we do alcohol." Got we got to. So, th- so she pours some alcohol in the wound, which wakes him up, of course. Um, and he goes, "I'm fine, I'm fine. I just got a touch of the dizzies." <laughs> 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 And she says, no, you're not, and dresses him up, gets him back on the horse. And she thinks that he can't move, and he says, well, if you're leaving me here, you're leaving me with, with a pistol. A, with a pistol, because I'm not going to have Blackjack Randall choose my fate for reasons we discover later. So then they're back in the saddle again. Back in the saddle again. And they head right on back to Castle Our Leoc, where Claire's like, oh, I've been here. My pussy got licked here. <laughs> I bet that's not going to happen this time. Uh, and that's that's our first episode. Yeah, that's the end of the first episode is her approaching Castle Leoc. It's There's so much that happens in the first episode. That it's, it's a lot of, like, laying the ground rules and, and they a lot of a Frank lot talking. And they spend a lot of time in uh, the 40s. Um, so it feels a little anticlimactic when they yeah. finally get to the castle, mostly because I just really want to see Mrs. Fitz. Mm-hmm. But um, but it's overall a really good episode, I think. Mm-hmm. Solid starter. We get all that hotness that's Jamie. We get four instances of sex. Was it four? I, yeah. I think it was four. And also, one more note about his entrance. Has anyone ever seen the movie, um, what's the Douglas Adams book? Come on, the one. Hitchhiker's Guide? Yes. Has anyone ever seen that movie? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know when Bill Nye makes his entrance as the architect? Yeah. And he's from the back, and he turns around, and it's like, if you're not British and you don't know who Bill Nye is, you're like, why the fuck does he get this entrance? That was like Jamie's entrance. I just thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> that was very important to me. I it's don't, quite I just had to take reveal. a minute. I'm, I still pretty... feel horrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to stick with the... Um, scale that we did last time as always these are not planned in advance Mm-mm. so julie mm-hmm. uh let's start with the costumes scale okay so from let's see um uh, dazed and confused 
This is good costumes. It is good costumes, but you know what I mean. Yeah. To um, Downton Abbey. Ooh. Where are we on the scale? We get some mm. good costumes this episode. You know what? I think I'm going to kind of split the difference, and I'm going to go with uh, Roll Bounce. Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, appropriate to the time periods. Um, you get to see a little bit of flair in the 40s. Obviously, when you go back to Scotland, it's non, like, very non-flair. But you do get to see some sweet kilts. Yep. Um, there, there are no roller skates in Scotland, though, so. A random movie reference. Man, well, we, we just watched it. Bounce. We just watched Roll Bounce a couple of weeks ago, and it became our new favorite film. Yeah. <laughs> nice job, Bow Wow. Yeah, nice job, Bow Wow. Not little Bow Wow, just Bow Wow. Also, nice job, Shy McBride, or as we call him in my house, Boston, Boston Public. Public. <laughs> Um, all right, that's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with like. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, the Pride and Prejudice BBC miniseries. Ooh, that's that's which is like you can tell they don't quite have the money. Yes, it's not know? like it's not like the movie, the Kira Knightley one. Yeah, where it's like all sumptuous and yes. stuff. Yes. Um, all right, cool. So now now we're on the on the the doing it scale. Well. Right. So on a scale, so like on a scale of newswire with Jim Lair, <laughs> to being naked on a wire with Jim Lair. <laughs> Where is this one? Uh, well, this this was definitely much sexier than all of season two. Uh, I, it's almost like they were filming a pilot for Stars, and we're like, what can we do to make sure we get this show picked up? Let's get some boning in there, stat. Get me some beautiful butts. Yeah, get me some beautiful butts and some boobs, too. Um, so I'm going to say, what's a movie where there's actual, like... I've got mine. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. All right, well, I'll do mine, and maybe you'll be inspired. Okay. So uh, mine is Atonement. Have you Ooh, seen Atonement? I know that there's a hot sex scene in oh, Atonement. Oh, it's against a wall of books, which is the sexiest part about it. There are so many books. Uh, Ooh, I can't, you know what? I, gotta, I did get inspired, but I think I have to save the one that I said for a different episode. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Atonement because, okay. because it's not all that much sex, but when it is good, it is very, very good. Yes. So uh, I'm going to go with atonement. Excellent. Julie is going to abstain. I'm at- <laughs> as Claire, I waited so as long. As Claire does for a while now. Um, all right, last one. How willing are you to, to leave the television to get a beer? Oh, yes. So what's the scale? Um, let's do the parent trap <laughs> to uh, the Lindsay Lohan one. Mm-hmm. Um, to uh, escape from which mountain? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say scale. that this is like, this is going to sound harsh, but because there was so much exposition and so much mansplaining of history that you could get up a lot and come back in, Frank would still be talking about <laughs> the cock rock. Uh, so I'm going to give it like PBS News Hour. Oh. Yeah, I can get up. I can get up whenever I want. Now, that being said, if there's a sex scene going, then it's like the movie speed. I can't leave. Yeah. But if it's... You can't get off the bus and it can't slow down. Right. If you, if you are being treated to one of Frank's many lectures, bye girl, I can go yeah. into my kitchen and maybe make dinner. I've got a similar <laughs> choice. I'm going to say The Matrix because okay. there are parts of The Matrix that are so good and then there's a lot of Lawrence Fis- Fishburne talking about philosophy and shit. Right, right. And sometimes you're just like, oh, this is when I'm supposed to go get popcorn. Great, see right. ya. Mm-hmm. We've already decided which pill we're taking, Lawrence. It's Excuse cool. Me. You don't have to keep talking. Um, but then Hugo Weaving shows up and it's all Mr. Anderson. And, and you're you like, just, you gotta be there. I can't leave. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, great. So, uh, we're going to save a quick minute at the end to talk about anything that we think this portends in future episodes or in season two. Um, but before we do that, we need to thank our non-sponsor for the week, uh, Miller High Life, the champagne of beers and Miller Light, a fine Pilsner beer, which we added orange juice to. Julie is also drinking Dunkin' Donuts. I am drinking, uh, (laughs) coffee from my home. Metropo- Metropolis coffee, though. It's good. That's good coffee. Um, and Janine is drinking some orange juice with a little beer in there. Uh, so those are our non-sponsors. As always, we're paying for our own beer, although maybe not permanently. Right. Uh, but for the first time, we need to thank our patrons of 
Patreon. Uh, and we have a few, um, a pretty decent number for only having done this for a week. Most of the time, we'll just be listing those who've uh, pledged at the level where it says you get thanked every episode and above. Mm -hmm. But just this one time, I'm just going to thank all of them because yes, it's please. just so It's incredible. So cool. It's so, so weird. Like, how? Thanks to Amanda Newton, Beth Locke, Kathleen Moniz, Liz Young, Jen Moniz, and Alan Iverson, who's not the basketball player, but it did not out. that Al Iverson. Yes. Um, uh, They're all wonderful, and we appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for the help. If you would like to be a patron of the Patreon for the Podlander Drunk Castion, uh, <laughs> you can do that at patreon.com slash Podlander Drunk Cast. Rewards include things like getting thanked on the show, um, being a part of the forum where you can tell us what kind of beer you want, uh, bonus content, uh, listen, people who've backed the show uh, are the only people currently who have access to our live show from Wizard World, which the recording's a little rocky, but we're so fucking funny that you should just listen to it anyway, <laughs> if I do say so myself. You also get to find out uh, who the, the answer to the question from both of us, all three of us, actually, you need this one too, uh, marry, fuck, or kill, Jamie, Murta, Jenny Murray, and you just really want to know what we all said. Mm -hmm. um, and there'll be more bonus content. At the $20 level, you get a shirt for every season of the show that we do. Um, season For season two, which is our season one, uh, I think the shirt's going to say, I heart painful moves, but we will also allow you to choose I heart gilf if you prefer. <laughs> um, so lots of cool stuff. So by all means, please, if you want to give, that's great. If you don't, that's great too. Thank you for listening. For those of you who've reviewed, thank you for reviewing and following us on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at PodlanderCast, on Facebook at Facebook.com slash PodlanderCast, and again, on Patreon. So thank you so much. We're going to give like a 15 to 20 second silence here so that we can have a real quick chat about some spoilery things. And if you are watching along with us, stop listening now. Bitch. <laughs> Welcome back to the spoiler section. Yep. Uh, we need a fun name for it. Spo Rotting produce. <laughs> spoiler lander. Something spoiler lander. Mm, that's not very original. Uh, maybe you can name it. So if anybody can name it, give us a name on Twitter, and we'll uh, we can, maybe we'll name it after you. Um, no, we won't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> unless, nope. unless your name is spoiler section, <laughs> and then we will absolutely name it after you. Anyway, uh, the only thing that we wanted to call out this episode, Julie, was what? What cool thing did you notice? The uh, fact that uh, Claire and Frank are unsuccessfully trying to start a family. Yeah, Tobias Menzels has this great moment where he gets this weird look on his face. And you can tell that maybe he thinks that there's something wrong with the pipes. Um, whose pipes we don't know, but as we find out in season two, it's the swimmers. It's Frank's little swimmers are not swimming. No, they're they're not swimming. Uh, they're too busy making hit their wife come. <laughs> like he's too busy. He's too busy rocking the boat mm -hmm. to, um, to to swim to plug the hole. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, it was just a nice little subtle moment that I didn't notice the first time, even having read the books. I didn't notice mm -hmm. it, but in rewatching, I noticed that. Um, if you noticed anything in rewatching and you're rewatching the show that you want to share with us, find us on Twitter. Anyway, we're going to go get some air, um, drink some water, and record another episode. So you'll hear it in a week. We're going to do it in two minutes. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Uh